More engineers and architects in Southeast Asia have registered with professional bodies in the region to have their qualifications recognized. And the ASEAN Secretary tells Channel News Asia there's a steady increase of these registered professionals who have started working in other ASEAN countries. They are among eight prof prof professions that come under the mutual recognition arrangements endorsed by ASEAN leaders to promote freer movement of the professionals as the region moves towards an economic community this year. However, it remains unclear if these arrangements will result in greater labour mobility as countries are still unwilling to liberalise jobs. In this week's Spotlight, Saifal Bari Ismail examines the challenges and implications of an urban labour market in the region. Dr. Nurul Huda Hassan has been in dental practice for about 11 years. Recently, the 35-year-old started her own clinic in Kota Damansara, just outside the Malaysian capital of Kuala Lumpur. But she also aspires to practice in Singapore and Indonesia. It is a stimulating idea to have that in mind. Uh, and I, I think it's quite exciting if I could be given the, the, the chance to actually move to another Asian countries and work. However, it's not easy to get a license as a foreign practitioner. Dr. Nurul said dentists have to take exams to practice in different countries. And she's hoping for greater flexibility in future, especially with a mutual recognition arrangement for dentistry. Probably one exam that allows you to work in a few countries, so we don't have to go over and over again sitting for the exam for different countries. ASEAN wants to establish a common market and production base by the end of this year. As current chair, Malaysia has an important role to make this dream of an ASEAN economic community a reality. Under an integrated community, there will be free flow of goods, services, investment, capital and skilled labour. The mutual recognition agreements are a key instrument in ASEAN's push to create greater labour mobility in the region. Through the MRAs, ASEAN countries may recognise the education and working experience obtained by workers in certain professions. So far, there are eight MRAs for doctors, dentists, nurses, architects, engineers, accountants, surveyors and those in the tourism industry. These professions only represent 1.5% of the total ASEAN labour force. Moreover, the arrangements don't guarantee greater labour mobility. That's because those allowed to migrate for employment are still determined by domestic rules and regulations. For example, if an engineer wants to come to work in Malaysia, immigration will require him to prove, despite the fact that he's already qualified, to prove that he's doing a job of work for a project for which there's no qualified Malaysian. In Singapore, measures have also been introduced to protect locals. From August 2014, employers have had to advertise vacancies on a government jobs bank for at least 14 days before they can apply for a skilled foreign worker. The Trade and Industry Ministry says while Singapore welcomes skilled manpower, it cannot afford to have an unregulated flow of foreign labour. This is due to the country's small physical size and limited resources. Observers believe it may be useful to consider a local's first ASEAN second mechanism. That is what the ASEAN agreements are all moving towards. And uh, that is also what the different mutual recognition arrangements are all moving towards. It's really so that you do have a wider pool of uh, skills and talent to choose from after looking at what is available in your own national talent pool first. Besides MRAs, ASEAN is also taking steps to create a qualification framework aimed at harmonising regulatory arrangements between countries. We don't look at uh, a, a cross of 10 countries, we start with bilateral. Let's maybe start with two countries that could recognise each other's skills uh, sets for a particular profession quite readily because of that level of development of the economy, which is more practical, as compared to 
if some economy is uh, still at the beginning of development, it's, it's, far, it's more difficult to actually realign that. The steps towards a free movement of labour may be slow, but economists cautioned at moving too fast. It will have to be an exercise in patience. I think uh, for the longer term, all countries should benefit. I think one of the things I would warn against is to look for rapid gains. Uh, I think one of the lessons that Singapore has tremendous experience in over the last 10 years is that rapid flows of uh, non-local manpower uh, have to be strictly regulated. We have benefited from it, we have had tremendous experience from it, and yet uh, we have also experienced a significant amount of uh, public debate about the consequences. ASEAN is expected to continue attracting international talents because of its growth potential fueling the demand for labour. The region is projected to be the fourth largest economy by 2050. An integrated community will accelerate the pace of structural change and is expected to generate some 14 million additional jobs by 2025. A free-flowing skilled labour in the region is expected to generate much higher demand for talent. In responding to these challenges, human resource practitioners say companies will need to develop better retention programmes to cope with the loss of talents. In a new ASEAN marketplace, companies will pursue sought-after skills across industries and countries. Two-thirds of the CEOs today say that they want to promote internal talent, which means they want to retain the people that they hire. They need to be offering good packages, uh, complement packages, uh, be flexible, uh, but also be an attractive employer to the younger generations. And mobility, international mobility, is something which in the younger generations is uh, high on the agenda. The younger generation in Myanmar also want greater mobility. Myanmar is one of the less developed ASEAN nations. It started on reforms in 2011 and the impact of skilled labour mobility may be significant. Some businesses are concerned workers may not be able to compete with foreign professionals. Will Myanmar have skilled professionals in 10 years? and the same ratio that Thailand, uh, Malaysia and Singapore had. I don't think so, yeah? Because the environment for them to develop is going to be harder. They will not be able to compete. In 10, 20 years, when Myanmar opens up, when it becomes a better, uh, even better investment climate than it is now, there's going to be a surge of people. ASEAN is moving into uncharted territory as it tries to realise this vision of an integrated community in 2015 and beyond. However, the reality of a full integration is still quite far away. ASEAN countries will need more time because they are still so different from one another in terms of stages of development. ASEAN can reap huge benefits from this integration in the future, but it has to work much harder in order to achieve this. Saifu Bari Smile, Channel News Asia, Kuala Lumpur.